Hey everyone, welcome back to Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber 2. I'm Dark, and today we're going to be going into Day 4, Christmas Chaos. So, the introduction and story, and I've got the attack box, as well as the box that we're going to be attacking, deploying right now. I recommend doing that if you're following along at this moment. We're going to be taking a look at some of the fundamental tools used in web application testing. You're going to learn how to use GoBuster to enumerate a web server for hidden files and folders to aid in the recovery of ELF's forms. Later on, you're going to be introduced to an important technique that is fuzzing and to get to put that uh, theory into practice. Our malicious, despicable, vile, cruel, contemptuous, evil hacker has defaced the ELF's forms and completely removed the login panel, which, well, you can't really do anything without that. However, we may still have access to the API. The sysadmin told us that the API creates logs using dates with a format of, so it looks like we have the full year and then we have two, or two digit um, month and day codes. This is gonna be the uh, eight character uh, date code. So let me go ahead and close this. What is fuzzing? To keep it simple, fuzzing can be argued as fancy brute forcing to some degree. We actually did a little bit of this in day three with um, doing brute forcing um, to some extent. And again, you can see that argument here. However, you can fuzz what you can't brute force. Fuzzing is using security tools to automate the input of data we provided to things such as websites or software applications. Fuzzing is an extremely effective process as computers can perform labor, uh, laborious actions like trying to find hidden files or folders, try different usernames and passwords much, much quicker than a human can and is usually willing to do. Poorly built applications are often unable to handle data the way it is supposed to under intense load. Moreover, the data we're parsing to the or passing the application may be interpreted and executed instead of being handled correctly. So for example, a system commands. We can use fuzzing to cause the application to trigger what's known as an error condition, where uh, this may be abused by a penetration or uh, bug bounty tester. And this is something that when you start looking at buffer overflows, which is something you'll need to do for the OSCP exam, you will look into fuzzing and specifically triggering these error conditions and starting to learn where that research comes into play to connecting what may seem just to be a normal error to an end user to actually making that, uh, connecting it to the technical uh, issue that you may be able to exploit, depending on the situation, what the error is. An introduction to using GoBuster. Logically speaking, there are many pieces to a website that the average user doesn't see. They can be anything from a sitemap to a secret directory, which contains important files, or just anything else. You can find tons of different things that developers think are secure or may have just forgotten on their web server. Unfortunately, this can cause developers to get a bit lazy and not protect these directories, allowing anyone who finds out that they exist to steal all the important data. GoBuster is the tool that helps us discover these valuable directories if they exist. The idea behind the tool itself is simple, brute forcing common paths to check if it's valid. So it's just sending many, many Git requests or just trying to request different pages from a web server and seeing if it pops up or what code it returns. Similar to how you would in your browser, albeit this tool is much, much quicker. GoBuster has three modes, dir, vhost, and DNS. For the sake of today, we're going to be using GoBuster in the dir mode, as this is the most likely the mode you're going to be using day to day. Dir, short for directory, uh, dir and uh, be selected by using, it, you can select this rather, I think that's supposed to be can, uh, by using the command go bust your dir and then the rest of the command. And we'll demo that in just a little bit. The way it does this is by using a word list. Um, and let's take a look at this helpful chart to visualize it. So the, we have the original URL, the item in the word list, and then the final URL. So we have the original URL of example.com or loveucmnatic.thm. That is a lovely website. Uh, the item in the word list, uh, backups or shepherds. And then we can see that we have those directories that we're trying here. GoBuster has a few other little tricks. It supports appending extensions, which means you can brute force files as well. We can use another handy little chart to visualize it and show an example later on. 
So here we can see, again, our example URL, the item in the word list, uh, backup, backup, or ice cream here, the specified extension, so we can check and see if these different files exist. Um, and in this case, it looks like we're looking for backup.php, uh, backup.txt, or ice cream.html. It looks like there's a small typo there. To find the data in the table above, we have used a command such as the following, assuming weirdlist.txt had the files backup and ice cream. So we have gobuster, dir, uh, you, I think typically do dash u here. So instead of dash w, dash u at the start here, it may be that gobuster just expects the URL at the beginning now. So it'd be example.com and then dash w for uh, selecting where your word list is going to be and dash x for extensions. So just uh, CSV list comma separated values list of the extensions that you want to test. While GoBuster is considerably faster than alternatives such as Durbuster on Kali, uh, Linux, it is still limited to the word list and options that you provide. Your enumeration is only as good as your word list and only as good as your patience to run that word list. The more appropriate your word list is to a target, the better your results will be. Word lists such as SecList, which we discussed in a previous task just a little bit, have word lists for specific applications and platforms. You can use the information gathered from enumerating to help determine what word list may be the most appropriate to use. Although we will come on to refining these, uh, those skills later, or in a later day rather. So depending on what you find, depending on what you think they might be running, either by looking through maybe a company's LinkedIn to see what they're hiring for, or what skills everyone has, or just different platforms that you would see on uh, through doing just active enumeration or active recon, you can determine a, what word list you ultimately need. GoBuster itself works like any other Linux tool, meaning it has an online man page which is available here and you can view the, this is the full manual of how to use it. If you have any questions or anything that might not be well explained either by me or by the room, you can take a look at it here and just use Control F to search for it. Which you can use as a reference if you want to learn more about the various options that GoBuster supports. However, let's detail a few of the common options below. So dash U is going to be to specify which URL to enumerate. So just a single dash here. Uh, dash W, as I mentioned before, is going to be your word list. And then dash X, as I mentioned before as well, is going to be your extensions. Recommended word list to use. So this is big.txt. I recommend pulling that down. And I believe this one's on. Yeah, there we go. So we have provided word lists for you on the attack box located in USR share word list. And this is the default location that you'll find them at in Kali Linux as well. This is also the default location for word lists on penetration distribution, such as Kali Linux. Yeah. To provide an example, big.txt is located at the file path USR share word list derby for derbuster or derb, which is, I believe the Command line equivalent, one of the two is uh, the GUI version of that. I don't really use Durbuster myself. And then big.txt. Take some time to explore other word lists provided and think of a situation where they may be effective. So if you have the select list page open, I recommend taking a look through some of the various options that they have available. Uh, it is good to be familiar with it, even though you may not use them necessarily to just know what options you have, because a lot of times, especially in hacking, Knowing or having that exposure is more than half the battle. Knowing that something exists or knowing roughly the path that you need to go to access something can be your saving grace, especially depending on if you are on a pen test and you've encountered something brand new. An introduction to using WFuzz, and I'm going to enjoy this because I don't use WFuzz myself and I've been meaning to get around to it. <laughs> the premise behind WFuzz is simple. Uh, occasionally, you want a bit more information about how much data something within a web application returns. This could be anything from a file, a response code, for example, a 404, meaning the URL doesn't exist, or the parameters used in a form similar to the form you attacked in day two. For example, let's say you're pen testing a note taking application and you want to see if you can view other notes by other users. One, may, or one way you may achieve, or wait, may want to achieve this is by fuzzing for usernames with the knowledge that every valid user would have a node.txt by default. Our wfuzz command would look uh, like the following. So we can see wfuzz, uh, remove that extra F there. 
uh, if you're typing in this command or just copying it directly in. And you can see that we have dash C, dash Z, uh, and then looks like we are specifying where our word list is. And then we have the host that we're attacking here along with the form that we're going to fuzz for. So it looks like we have localhost on port 80, and this is probably gonna be where the username would be. And then we all know, we know that they start out with a note.txt by default. So this would be, for example, if you open up Notion uh, and it'll give you the introduction document or things like that. I believe Google Drive does that now with a bunch of default documents that you would know that these exist for every single account. Now WFuzz will query the web server using the words iterated from the big.txt word list. To illustrate, so we'd have, it's just gonna iterate through these and you can see where it takes that place with note.txt appended at the end. And we can see WFuzz running here. Note how the fuzz parameter is being replaced with the words from the word list. We'll outline some of the options that be, or can be configured in WFuzz However, it's worth knowing that the display or that uh, will display results that are different from the parameters that we've set. In the picture above, we've set it so that it hides all pages that have 57 words on them. And let's see. So it looks like we've got our hide option here. That's typically for whatever you have as like a page not found response and you know how many words appear on that page or just a set um, a known quantity that you wanna ignore you're going to go through and block that because it doesn't mean anything to results and you're going to filter it out anyways. Since WFuzz, uh, so let's see. In the picture, we've set it to hide any pages with 57 words on them. Since WFuzz found a URL with only eight words, it's displayed to us as it's not 57 words, which we can see right here. It's important to know that you can fuzz any part of the URL, meaning that you can test any parameters if you don't know them as well. And that's just gonna be putting fuzz wherever you wanna fuzz at. As with any Linux-based tool, WFuzz also has a useful main page here, although I've added some more of the useful flags below. So we can see dash C, it looks like that shows the output and color, which can be very nice, uh, especially if you're looking at a huge amount of uh, information in a terminal. Dash Z specifies what will replace fuzz in the request. For example, dash Z is gonna be files, uh, big.txt in our example, and we're telling WFuzz to look for files by replacing fuzz with the words within big.txt. Dash dash hc is don't show certain HTTP response codes. So for example, if we're getting a bunch of 404 responses, we don't want that. Or if we want uh, to hide 200 codes with the specific knowledge that maybe we're looking for a redirect or something like that dash dash hl uh, don't show a certain don't show a certain amount of lines in the response uh, and dash dash uh, hh is going to be a certain amount of words and as we saw up here dash dash hw is going to be the uh, words rather let's bring this all together and demonstrate some of these options let's say we wanted to fuzz an application at uh, shebase.thm forward slash login.php to find the correct credentials to the login form. After recalling our knowledge from day two, well, we know all about URL parameters. We can take a bit of a guess as to what parameters the login form may be using, uh, and we can see that username and password are probably what we want. Worth a try. Our wfuzz command would look like so. So we have wfuzz showing our output of color, showing our replacement here with dash Z, and then dash D, we're showing what parameters we want to have swapped out, and then what parameters rather that we want to fuzz, and then dash U is gonna be our URL that we're going to be fuzzing. Where wfuzz will now iterate through a word list we provided and replace the fuzz values in the uh, username and pass password parameters rather. So we have our challenge here. Deploy the instance attached to this task, which we've already done, which is the green deploy button at the top, and deploy the attack box by pressing the blue start attack box button at the top right hand side of the page. After allowing five minutes, navigate to, and we're gonna go ahead and pull this up since I'm using the attack box as well. And this IP will be different for you. So make sure that you don't just type mine because it won't really do anything. 10, 10, 2, 2, 5, 1, 2, 9. 
then we have a lovely animation of a Christmas tree. Alright, uh, it is up to you to decide if you wish to create the word list yourself or use a larger word list located at opt AOC day 2 uh, 20 or 2020 day 4 word list on the attack box. You can also download the word list there. So if you're not using our attack box, you can just grab it from here, and that's what I would recommend. In summary, use the tools and techniques outlined in today's advent of cyber, search for the API, find the correct post, and bring back Elf's forms. So it looks like we don't have a login page anymore, and it's just this image, or rather a GIF, that we're seeing. Oh, nope, we have our message there at the bottom. That's lovely. You have been defaced. Your forms are gone. Okay. That's that's nice. Uh, so we can go ahead and bring up the terminal. And I'm going to go ahead and start GoBuster. And it looks like we have the API that's available. Uh, we would have... We're going to form our WFuzz command. Uh, let's see. How to approach the challenge. So if we know there's theoretically an API directory, we can use GoBuster to enumerate the website and see if we can find anything. Then assuming we do find something, we should investigate it for interesting files. Let's say that, uh, let's say we find, then find there seems to hold some logs. We know searching by the date, so we can infer that there seems to be a good chance that we'll be using the date parameter to interact with the API. So it looks like we're going to be targeting, we're going to first start off with GoBuster, we're going to try to find the API directory, and then we're going to try to find a specific set of files using WFuzz. Uh, we know that the API takes a date in the form of this eight character date code, and a word list uh, in the this format can be found in a hint for the task. Although if you want an extra challenge, you can try to build a word list in that format yourself. Finally, APIs may not return data if the found parameters aren't parsed. So with that knowledge, we can use the options in WFuzz to filter out parameters that don't return anything. With that in mind, we should be able to get a flag. And I'm going to go ahead and pause right here. I'm going to run through the activity and then I will show you guys how to run through this. Uh, if you want to follow along with me, uh, just skip past this pause. Otherwise, I'd recommend pausing right here and then you can go through and try the activity yourself and then come back to the video. All right, and we're back. Uh, first thing that I want to mention, there's a couple recommended rooms on this. There is the Zeth Web Room. Uh, this is a web challenges room, I believe. I think this one's free. I definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, CC Pen Testing is a room made by Paradox, uh, one of the mods in the Discord, that this is a crash course into pen testing that demonstrates a number of tools. Definitely something to, worth looking into. I personally would recommend, if you want some practice with GoBuster, you uh, going through the Von Varsity room, if you go to learn and then all rooms, you should find it right away. It's one of the most popular rooms on the site that it goes through how to use GoBuster pretty thoroughly. That being said, let's go ahead and get right into the questions. So the first question, given the URL, HTTP Shebes, or Shebes at or dot XYZ forward slash API dot PHP, what would the entire WFuzz command look like to query the breed parameter using the word list big.txt, assuming that big.txt is in the current directory. So we can do that with the command wfuzz-c to get color output, dash z to select that we're going to use a file, and we want the file big.txt, and then we have the URL here with breed, and then we have fuzz here at the end. All right, moving on. So we're gonna go to the actual challenge to find the flag. So starting off, we can see that we have, again, our website here that, uh, well, uh, it's just a GIF and it looks like the login form is just completely gone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start by using the tool GoBuster, which we're going to go ahead and bounce over to the terminal to find where that API might be at. So this isn't as straightforward because there is a PHP file hidden in this directory. And I actually went a little bit further than necessary with my command, so you can ignore the last bit. I'll walk through it here in just a moment. We can find that API directory, though, with the command gobuster dir mode dash u for the uh, URL, so HTTP, and then your uh, the IP address that you're going to be examining, uh, dash w for the word list, and I'm using the big word list since it was referenced quite a bit throughout this. And then you can ignore this last bit. You don't need the PHP extension. 
So we can see that GoBuster runs and then eventually it finds this API directory there. Now if we go back to the web browser and navigate to the API directory, we can see that we have a PHP file in here called site-log.php. Well, that's very interesting because that means that uh, since that's exposed, we might be able to get access to the logs, which is going to get us eventually our flags. So we can take this knowing that this page or PHP file is in this directory and go over to the second tab that I have here and use wfuzz to find a log file that might have some interesting information in it for us. We can do that with the command wfuzz c to get color output, uh, which it kind of comes out in color for me. Dash Z selecting our word list here, and I'm just using the word list that was provided as, or in the hint rather, dash U for our URL, and then I have site-log.php at the end, question mark, date as my parameter, and then I have fuzz at the end. Make sure that you have all this typed correctly. If this fails for you, make sure that you have the IP typed correctly and make sure that you have the full command uh, fully typed out correctly and you don't have any typos either with missing a flag or maybe missing, uh, I was missing uh, the E and date when I first ran this and I was like, I can't find anything. I think that this task might be broken. No, it's not. I just was missing the E. And then we can see that WFuzz runs and right away it sees uh, that we get a response that is different from all the other ones with 13 characters. And that looks quite promising. So we can copy that out and take it. And then if we go in here, we can see that this is just our PHP file. This won't actually do anything for us. But if we go to that directory with that specific uh, date code at the end, we get our flag. And we can copy that out by selecting it, doing copy. And then if we open our side here, and we can see that it is on the clipboard. And you can also type this out if you want. Otherwise, that is going to do it for day four. If you guys have any questions, as always, I have the Try Hack Me Discord linked in the video description below. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next day.